We're talking about how portrayals of gay characters on screen affect how we see people in real life on today's BFD. Recently, Amy Pascal, chairman of the Columbia TriStar Motion Picture Group, spoke at an LGBT event, directing her comments to producers of both television and film. And the thrust of her argument was basically as follows. The portrayal of gay characters on screen has an impact off screen, and currently the industry is doing it wrong. And we need to change it because it matters. Check out the link in the description below to the article. So today, let's look at portrayals of gay characters on screen, how that's changed over the years, and where it might go in the future. And joining me is my friend and yours, film critic for the rap, Alonzo Duralde. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Thanks for having me back. I mean, what do you think about what Amy Pascal said? On the one hand, you don't want to censor artists. They need to be able to express themselves, to portray the world as they see it, and you don't want the somebody from on high kind of just arbitrarily, you know, black marking, you know, certain phrases or words or ideas or whatever. On the other hand, um, I do think that uh, gay and lesbian characters, GLBD characters really, are kind of the, the last wave of acceptance acceptable stereotypes or acceptable bigotry really in, in mass media. Even after it became completely unacceptable to put the N-word in the mouth of somebody who was not a, an avowed racist and clearly the villain of the piece, you could still get away with, oh, that's so gay, or calling somebody a faggot. It's just a matter of course. How did portrayals of, of gay characters in films start out? Uh, how did it evolve? After 1936 or so, for decades, one of the things that was on the verboten list, along with you know open mouth kissing or criminals getting away with it, was the notion of sex perversion. LGBT fell right under that category. So there were a lot of coded gays. You had your sort of effeminate, you know, shop clerk, and you had the, you know, women's prison warden, and if you're paying attention, you could read them as queer characters. So then you cut to the late 60s, where the, uh, where the code is pretty much dead at this point, and movies can finally, you know, be free to do what they want and show what they want. So then we get gay characters in Hollywood movies, and then they're almost always murderers. <laughs> Mm -hmm. or they're pathetic, or they, they turn straight, or something yeah. you know, ridiculous. In the, the late 70s, early 80s, you start to see queer voices behind the camera. And then in the early 90s, you have the new queer cinema movement, where you've got directors like Todd Haynes, and Greg Gus Van Sant, and, and Jenny Livingston, yeah. and Greg Araki, yeah, you know, who are totally unapologetically telling their stories. And it's very much, I think, a response to the AIDS crisis in a lot of ways. Uh, there's a lot of anger. There's a lot of need for, for visibility. Then you get the kind of wave of like gay and lesbian rom-coms. Mm -hmm. So then from there, it just has kind of proceeded where I think we're part of the big mix now. Television, obviously, is where it's happening. You know, mm -hmm. that's where you, you get your new normals and your true bloods and, and your different shows that are really able to kind of incorporate these characters and do interesting things with them. Are there any other demographics out there that are marginalized in the same way that homosexuals were, say, 40, 50, 60 years ago in film and TV? Well, fat people. Is that right? I think I think fat people is the very last acceptable, you know, part of the expression, butt of jokes. Yeah. And obviously there are still issues about race and about gender that we'll be dealing with for, for centuries in this country, you know. But I think in terms of overt, outright bigotry, that gays and fat people are the last people to, to sort of, where you can, they can, you can still get away with that sort of thing. Um, so what are the real practical uh, cultural effects of portrayals of homosexuals in the film. When you have Mitt Romney say that he's a modern family fan, when you have Joe Biden saying that, that Will and Grace played a key role in making uh, America ready for same-sex marriage, when gay people stop being this sort of nebulous other and become uh, actual recognizable human beings, uh, that changes people's lives. I think that's always been sort of the great disinfectant of any, any negative ism, you know, racism or sexism or homophobia or whatever, it's the, that human contact, and sometimes that human contact happens in a fictional setting. Alonzo, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. As with the evolution of the portrayal of homosexuals in film, the same thing can be said for African Americans, women, and many other groups out there. So it falls upon us as viewers to consume our media with a much more critical eye. So watch carefully, folks. And while you're at it, click the link in the description below to take action to defend marriage equality. And don't forget to subscribe. For BFD, I'm David Park. <laughs>